Hello everyone, my name is Ali and I'm a fifth year medical student at Cambridge University. I'm also the co-founder of SixMed, uh, a small company that runs courses for medical school applicants and I've been teaching the BMAP crash course for the last five years. Me and my friends are currently on our medical elective in Cambodia, which is very exciting. And we thought it would be cool to make this series of videos where we give you tips for the BMAT and how to do well in it. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to prepare for Section 1 of the BMAT. We'll start with a very brief overview of what Section 1 is actually about, and then we'll go over some tactics on how to prepare for it. So what is Section 1? Uh, Section 1 is 35 questions, and you get 60 minutes to do them. This comes out to about 1 minute and 42 seconds per question which is quite a lot of time. Time is not usually an issue in section one. Time becomes an issue in section two. Section one has a mixture of critical thinking and problem solving questions. There are just under a half critical thinking and just over a half of the, of the section is problem solving. The critical thinking questions are quite formulaic. Um, they usually give you a passage of text about four or five lines long, uh, followed by a question like, what's the conclusion of this passage? What's the assumption? What's the flaw? That sort of thing. There is a very specific strategy for tackling each one uh, and it's very preparable. Problem solving is a little bit less formulaic than critical thinking is. Problem solving just involves basic data interpretation and calculations. So you might get things like a table, a graph, and have to interpret it, have to work out a percentage, that sort of thing. With problem solving, there are a few question types that do come up time and time again, uh, and those are the ones that we want to be getting the strategy down for. So how do we actually prepare for section one? Well, section one is essentially about two things. Firstly, strategy, and secondly, practice. Uh, and of those two, practice is by far the most important. So let's start by talking about how to practice section one. By far the best way of preparing for section one is by doing loads and loads and loads of practice questions. There are about 14 or 15 years worth of BMAP papers at the time of this recording. You can do all of the section ones of those. And there are also at least 10 years worth of TSA Oxford papers. TSA Oxford is very, very similar to BMAT section one. So if you do all of those questions, you'll be very well prepared for section one. There are two main ways of doing all these questions. Firstly, you can find the PDFs on the official admissions testing service website. Alternatively, you can go on a website that I helped make called BMAT Ninja. I'll put a link in the description. And absolutely free of charge, you can do all of these questions in our beautiful online interface where you can do it on your laptop, on your tablet, on your phone, wherever you like. So that's the practice bit covered. Let's talk about strategy now. And strategy strategy varies depending on whether we're talking about critical thinking or problem solving. For some people, the strategy for critical thinking questions does come quite naturally. Like for some people, it's obvious where the conclusion is and where the flaw in the argument is and which statement strengthens a particular argument. If you're one of those people, you don't really need to learn much strategy for critical thinking, you just do lots and lots of practice. If you find critical thinking a little bit more difficult, you might find it useful to go over an A-level critical thinking textbook. Uh, the OCR exam board has some good ones and they give you sort of a lowdown on how to do the conclusion questions, the assumption questions, the flaw questions. Alternatively, and again a shame plug for BMAT Ninja. We've got loads of online notes uh, on how to do critical thinking questions. Alternatively, you can attend our BMAT crash course if you're in the UK, which is an in-person course that takes you through the strategy of critical thinking. And if neither of those float your boat, I'll be uploading some more tutorials in the next few weeks about how to go over the critical thinking questions so you don't need to worry about that. The nice thing about critical thinking is that it is very formulaic. There are only these seven question types that come up each year. So if you can get the strategy down for answering each of these seven questions, you'll essentially be able to get almost full marks in the critical thinking questions. Now for problem solving. Problem solving, sadly, there's no formulaic way to prepare for it. The questions do vary from year to year quite significantly, although there are a few different types of questions that do keep coming up, like repeating patterns, spatial awareness, that sort of thing. Again, we've got loads of information about problem solving questions on BMAT Ninja and at the BMAT Crash Course, but to be honest, it's nothing you can't find on the internet. And I'll put some links in the description to resources that would help you with problem solving preparation. Also for problem solving, there are a few useful things to be able to do. Firstly, it's very useful to know your times tables up to 12 inside out. I know it sounds silly to say, but there are a huge number of questions where sort of being quick at arithmetic would really, really help you. And while I did say that time is not normally an issue in section one, we don't want to be spending absolutely ages on simple calculations. So we want to be learning our 12 times tables inside out. Secondly, estimation is a really important part of problem solving. So being able to look at the answers and work out whether you can round to the nearest 10, round to the nearest 100. If the answers are 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, you know you've got a good scope for rounding. If the answers are 1 pound 40, 1 pound 41, 1 pound 42, you know you've got less of a scope for rounding. Also with estimation, it's important to know which way you've estimated, whether you've rounded up, whether you've rounded down, because that does change your answer. For example, if your estimated answer is 50, but the options are 48 and 52, you do want to remember which way around you estimated if that makes sense. Finally, for problem solving, it's really useful to be able to easily convert between fractions, decimals, and percentages. Now, I know this sounds like a lot of maths, but happily, most of problem solving is related to maths. So if you can get these skills down, you'll be very well placed to doing these questions very well. And then all you have to do is practice. So that's how you prepare for section one. Practice is by far the most important thing. You can do loads of practice by doing all 15 past BMAT papers and 
10 to 15 TSA Oxford papers, that gives you a few hundred questions that you can work through in your own time as you prepare for the BMAT. Alternatively, as I mentioned, you can do them all for free on BMAT Ninja. Just make an account and you can do them all on the online interface. As we've discussed, the strategy is also important. It's useful to have a strategy for critical thinking questions just because they are so formulaic. And it's useful to be brushed up on your basic arithmetic skills, your times tables, your fractions, decimals, percentages, and your estimation to do well in the problem sorting. So that concludes this short video on how to prepare for section one. Stay tuned over the next few days. We'll be talking more about how to prepare for section two, how to prepare for section three, and giving you more specific breakdowns of the content of each section to give you the best chance of doing well in the BMAT. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. Um, if you would like to see more of the same thing, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.